Hello, everyone. Welcome to Met Related Pep Talk question and answer session. And for today's question, we have one from Patrick Davis and then Amma Frimpon Johnson. Well, the questions are quite related, so we put them together and then we try to address them in this um, in this video. So the question is one: What are satellite observation modes? What are the various satellite observation modes? And then also, how do satellites retrieve information? Um, as an example, they want to know how satellites retrieve, for instance, sea surface temperature information. All right, so we we'll address this like we always do from the fundamentals and then we elevate it to the question itself. Okay, however, we'll try to restrict because satellite observation or satellite um, analysis or satellite studies are quite broad. So in this video, I'll try to keep it quite brief and still in time, but then try to make it cover all the um, essential aspects that we need to know. So first, let's start off with what a satellite is. So when we talk of a satellite, we are referring to an object that also orbits around a bigger object. So in this case, we have natural and then artificial satellites. The natural satellites in this case are example moon. So the moon revolves around the planet. For instance, on Earth, there is one moon that revolves around the Earth. And so that is a natural satellite. Um, other planets also have their own individual moons or their own moons that revolve, sort of that move around the planet. And so those also are natural satellites. And then we have the artificial satellites, which um, let's take Earth as an example, our uh, space. We have a lot of satellites in motion that are orbiting the Earth. And then they are used primarily for remote sensing, for communication, for navigation, for military purposes, and so on and so forth. And so um, those are the artificial satellite or the man-made satellites. Now, satellites generally, with this, our emphasis now zooms into the artificial satellites and the operation. So satellites generally can be either active or passive. Now, active ones are the ones that produce their own transmission. So they, they, they give off their own radiations or let's say our own, their own source of light. And that hits the um, surface that they want to observe and then they get information back. So once they produce their own incidence or their own transmission, their own source of light, we term them as active because they have their own sort of artificial sources. And then for passive satellites, passive satellites depend on the natural sources of light, where in this case, it could be the sun or the moon. So the sun's radiation hits the object of observation and then there's a the attenuation, so scattering into various parts. And then the ones that are in the direction of the satellite get to retrieve the information of the ones scattered in its direction. And that now based on their relative um, orbit distance to the Earth, we can classify also the satellites as either Leo, Mu, or Hue. That's where Leo is the low Earth orbiting satellite, Mu is the medium Earth orbiting, orbiting satellite, and then the Hue is the high Earth, high Earth uh, orbiting. All these are based on their relative distances away from the Earth. But then we zoom in onto some classifications of the orbits of the satellites. So we have geostationary satellites or geostationary orbiting satellites. Now these are stationed around the equator. And so they give information on a fixed point on the Earth or a fixed area on the Earth at all times. And so they tend to move with the same speed. They would complete a total revolution, a total revolution about the planet, just as the Earth also completes a total rotation. So at every point in time, there's information gathered from a fixed point. So if the satellite is stationed over Africa, for instance, it gives information over Africa all throughout time. All right. And then we also have the geosynchronous orbiting satellites. Now, geostationary satellites or geostationary orbiting satellites are a special example of the geosynchronous orbiting satellites. Now, for geosynchronous orbiting satellites in general, we, um, they, they actually move in such a way that they are independent of the inclination and then, yes, the, the inclination, that's the angle of inclination. But then at every point, it would give us information 
So it would give, let's say, information at a fixed point constantly at that same time. So for instance, if it's to give information from, let's say, a country, a particular country, every day at 11 o'clock local time, it means at 11 o'clock, that local time every day will get information from that fixed point because as we see from this image, irrespective of the inclination, as the satellite is also revolving about the planet, which is in this case, the Earth, the Earth is also rotating, okay? So, but then let's assume that we pick the information from this point. As the Earth rotates and then the satellite revolves, it slightly moves away from the point of reference. But on its descending path, it would come back onto that same observing point again. And then when it, it goes further away from it, and then when it comes back into its ascending, at the same point, it would hit the same point again. So we would have more like two, you might have about two um, measurement times that would be in sync or would be picking information from that same point, which we term as the ascending path or the ascending path and the descending path. Because like at the time of ascent or the satellite, um, satellite moving upwards, it would pick information from a particular point at a fixed time, okay? And then um, also on its descending at a fixed time. Now the difference between that and the geostationary is that for geostationary, it picks the information at a fixed point all throughout the time, okay? Irrespective of the time, it's picking information at the same point. But geosynchronous orbiting ones would pick information at a fixed point at a fixed time, okay? And then we also have the polar orbiting satellites or the ones in polar orbit. Now they move in a polar a forward form or they move nearer the poles. And that's why we term them polar orbiting satellites. All right. Now with the observation modes, I'll be using Skiamaki as an example here because um, Skiamaki has almost all the um, various observation modes we would look at. And so it becomes clear to use that. Now, the very first one is the limp observation mode. Now, in this case, bear in mind that the satellites have on them instruments, which are for the measurements, okay? It's just like having um, an aircraft with passengers on board. It's the same way the satellite is just the framework, okay? It's just like the framework. And then on it, we have the various instruments that pick the measurements on board. All right, now the instruments in this case, they look at the edge of the atmosphere, okay? So just like we have this, it's quite tangential to the Earth. So when the source of light hits the Earth, now it gets scattered in different direction, okay? It's scattered in different directions. But then the ones that would be tangential to the Earth, which will move towards the point of the satellite, get to retrieve information in that layer of the atmosphere that's within the satellite. Okay, so LIM has a tangential approach, sort of picking quite tangential to the Earth. And then we also have the nadir measurement, which measures in a vertical column. Okay, so when the radiation or the source of light hits the um, atmosphere or the point of observation, now it's scattered in different directions. The ones that would move in the vertical column, okay, the ones that get to move in the vertical column, as we see in this case, we move towards the satellite and then that will pick information in a vertical column. That's the nadir mode of observation. We also have the occultation. The occultation is no, in a way not so different from the limb because it also picks tangential to the earth. But then, however, unlike the limb, this one has the satellite facing directly the source of light, which in this case is the sun or the moon. So we have the solar occultation and then the lunar occultation mode. Now, uh, with this, the source of light hits the object scattered in all directions on all forms, and then some gets directly into the satellite, and it picks that which you are more like in a straight line form. Okay, it's not so different from the limb, but then the difference, the key difference here is that the source of light or the source of incident light is directly facing the, the, the satellite. And then we also have a combination of the limb and then the nadir, which we call the limb nadir matching. Now with this, we are for limb nadir matching. First, we take observation in the limb mode, which is in the tangential approach. The satellite takes observation in the tangential approach. And then like we have in the first case, it picks a tangential. And then after 
sometime because the satellite is moving it gets to pick also the media information and then now putting these two geometries together that's the limb and then the nadir helps us get a better understanding of the atmosphere that's a three-dimensional approach of understanding the atmosphere and then also the parameter of interest we are looking at all right so for instance if i if a satellite retrieves both the limb and nada, and then we have this limb nada matching, we are able to use that to estimate the tropospheric information because the limb gives us a more layered form um, information, and then the nada gives us a vertical column, so we can um, make some deductions and then get information from just a tropospheric column. All right. So generally, when we talk of satellites and the observation, the satellite works like the human eye. Uh, the way the human eye works is that when the radiation, let's take our uh, ability to differentiate between colors, when the radiation hits an object, it is scattered in all directions. Now, the ones that get scattered into the human eye move with a particular wavelength. <clears throat> they move at a particular wavelength. So the eye would observe the wavelength of that scattered radiation and then it's able to distinguish that, okay, this is this color. That's exactly how satellites work. Now we have radiation sources, be it either artificial source or the um, natural source. It hits the ocean surface. And then the ocean surface, if you remember from the very first episode that we looked at, where we said everybody or every um, object we can think about, once there's incident light on it, also will tend to emit. So once the ocean surface receives, it also re-emits back into space. And then now the ones that get re-emitted into the field of view of the satellite, the satellite will pick the information that's coming from them. Now bear in mind that the wavelength has, is just a typical wave. So it has amplitude, it has like a length, right? And so once the amplitude um, information is picked, the satellite can be able to estimate that, okay, this is the strength. Now the amplitudes in this case refer, they, they are references to the intensity, okay, on the bus cutter, the intensity of the bus cutter. So based on that information, the satellite is able to estimate that, okay, this is the magnitude. Bear in mind, the amplitude varies also with temperature. So once it hits the surface, based on the surface, the ocean surface temperature, we have a particular bus scatter, or we have a scattering back in a particular wavelength. <clears throat> so the satellite picks the information and then it's able to quantify from this um, relayed information or but, but, um, information that is gained after the scattering on the ocean surface and it's able to estimate that, okay, this is the magnitude of the sea surface temperature. All right. Now, uh, most of the um, SST observations are best done in the infrared mode, the infrared portion of the EM radiation or the EM spectrum, and then also the microwave. Okay, so most of the satellites that we have monitoring ocean properties and then sea surface temperature, they give the information or they, they, they observe in the infrared band to the microwave band. However, one thing to note is that the infrared also has, a, even though it has a good spatial resolution because of its, um, properties. It has a good spatial resolution, but then it becomes very susceptible to clouds. So once it goes through clouds, there are attenuations. And so to get a good estimate of your SSD using infrared sensors, it means you should have a cloud-free atmosphere. But then there's also the microwave approach, which microwave is able to transcend, you know, it has no problems with the clouds. So with the microwave band of observation, it's easy to monitor the SST or the sea ocean properties, all right? But then also the challenge of the microwave is that it hasn't got a wider spatial resolution as that of the infrared. So a better approach or what most satellites do, most modern satellites do, is to integrate the two um, modes, that's the infrared and then the microwave um, bands and use them to estimate the ocean properties. And it's similar for almost every um, observation that's done, not just SST, but every property that satellites monitor, they monitor in particular with bands, okay, particular, wave, um, band, particular bands of the waves that are, let's say, they are, they are very good to monitor within that range, okay? And so basically that's how satellites 
take information on the SST and so on and so forth. Um, so that will be all for today's question and answer session. Thanks for your time and your attention. If you have any question, leave it in the comment section and then um, the team will try to respond to it probably in the subsequent video or in the comment section. Thank you again.